thing I do is paint. I've always used art as some kind of therapy. Robert Shetterly is a self-taught artist whose early work established him as a surrealist. 20 years ago, his art took him in a new direction. Right after 9-11, the George W. Bush administration started using 9-11 as a pretext for the propaganda and lies to get us into the Iraq war. Anyway, I was just so angry and so full of grief about where we were going and why. And the question to me was, you know, what could I do? He was living with his family tucked away on the Blue Hill Peninsula. And I was doing a lot of unhealthy ranting. I was just, I was just angry, you know. So my poor wife was just going crazy with me. And I thought, I've got to do something with the anger I feel and with the energy of the anger and the energy of the grief. Something positive rather than something negative, which was not only doing nothing to change the situation, but it was hurting me. I actually felt that I was damaging myself. Shetterly turned to art to craft a message a message unapologetically political. Eventually it just came to me, why don't I surround myself with people I admire who make me feel good about this country? His first portrait was of the father of free verse, American poet Walt Whitman. And this man believed that not only all people, but all created things are essentially equal. And I thought, well, paint this person from, you know, 150 years ago who understood that as a poet. You know, as I'm trying to understand what I'm going through now as an artist. After he finished that portrait, he felt better. But the feeling was fleeting. And then a few days later, I was ranting again. And my wife said to me, geez, why don't you paint a few more portraits? And I looked at her and I said, you know, I'm going to. I'm going to paint 50 portraits. I'm going to call them Americans to tell the truth. And as soon as I said it, it was like I had levitated. I don't think I've ever felt so free in my life. Over the last two decades, he has selected and painted each subject. Today, Americans Who Tell the Truth is made up of more than 250 portraits. When I started with Frederick Douglass and Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman and you know Eugene Debs and Mother Jones and Jane Addams and all these people, 19th century figure. And I realized what I was doing was painting the people who had been marginalized by the society. And when you look closer, you realize that these were the folks who were trying to insist that this country live up to its own ideals. With each brush stroke, Shetterly has been trying to do the same. It's a really intimate process uh, in, in which requires me to be, you know, in conversation basically with the people I'm painting while I'm working on them. It was really just me trying to change something in my own backyard. Right? For those no longer living, he gets to know them through their own words. Sojourner Truth quote says, now I hear talking about the Constitution and the rights of man, and I comes up and I takes hold of this Constitution, and it's mighty big, and I feels for my rights, but there ain't any there. And then I says, God, what ails this Constitution? And he says to me, Sojourner, there is a little weasel in it. It's not the powerful who wake up one morning and say, oh my God, we forgot to free the slaves. We forgot to give women their rights. It has to be the people who have been marginalized and humiliated and put outside the society, who've had all their power taken away from them, who insist on having it back. And that's what actually becomes the, the nobility of the society, is the people who insist that we live up to our own ideals. Each portrait is the same size. I put the quotes there to get people who are looking at them to, to stop for a minute. I want them to say, oh, that person is looking at me with some intensity. Oh, look, there are words here. So this person is really thinking about something important. What does this mean? And designed to get people talking. Because of the art, that door opens in unexpected places. And it opens up a dialogue that often between people who think they can't talk to each other. The project has traveled to 35 states. Shetterly goes with it, speaking to colleges, schools, and churches. I mean, if I were just talking, saying these ideas that I've got about American history and the courage of American citizens, I wouldn't be invited into schools. But because I painted these portraits, it gives me an entree, even into schools that don't agree with the politics of it. The art authenticates the message in a way. The portraits bring life to Americans often overlooked. I've been painting, particularly concentrating on young people, to show young people how much power they actually have. I mean, Samantha Smith was 11 in Maine 
you know, when she became an international peace figure, 11. And what I teach them, and then which the kids are really interested to learn, is that it's the person with the courage to challenge injustice who becomes the teacher for our society. 20 years of work with a message he hopes will be etched in people's mind and create change. I use the portraits to inspire and try to give courage to other people to resist injustice. Robert has plans to take the show on the road again and travel once it's safe. Eventually, he wants all of the portraits to be on display where they can be used for activism and education. The footage you saw in the story is from a documentary being made by Richard Kane about Americans who tell the truth, and that's expected to be out in September, along with a book about the project.